In today's episode, we'll be diving a little bit into the facts that form the case of R.V. Shamji, which involved a murder that took place in late November 2016 in Toronto. The killer's name was Dr. Mohamed Shamji, and the victim was his wife, Dr. Ilana Frick Shamji. To understand this story, you have to go back many years before the murder took place. The couple had been having marital problems for many years, and Muhammad would often react with verbal, emotional, and physical abuse towards his wife and children. For example, in 2005, Muhammad was charged with domestic assault and threatening bodily harm against his wife and daughter, and he had to enter what's called a peace bond, which is similar to a restraining order. There was another incident in 2012, where late one night, a neighbor observed Ilana walking away from the couple's house while Muhammad swore at her and said, I'm gonna get you. The neighbor, out of concern for the children, called Children's Aid Society. Sometime in 2012, Ilana started to consider getting a divorce, especially because she suspected that her husband Muhammad was also cheating on her. Initially, there was an attempt to work things out between the couple, but that went nowhere. In May 2016, Ilana contacted a lawyer and asked to start the divorce proceedings. She was apparently so concerned about how her husband would react, she told her lawyer, if something ever happened to me or I went missing, you'll know what happened to me. After some initial hesitation, Ilana went to her lawyer again on November 24, 2016. Ilana told her lawyer about all the physical abuse she was being subjected to, including forced sexual relations with Muhammad. She explained to her lawyer that things were so bad, she was no longer staying in the same bedroom as Muhammad, and was staying in another bedroom in the same house. By November 28, 2016, Ilana's lawyer sent a letter to Muhammad explaining that Ilana wanted to get a divorce. By November 30th, 2016, Ilana emailed her lawyer saying he is having a hard time accepting things, but there is no violence currently. Unfortunately, things would not stay that way. On November 30th, 2016, Ilana's teenage daughter Yasmin went to bed at 9 p.m. Her bedroom, being right next to her parents' bedroom, was close enough for her to hear some commotion going on. Yasmin heard her mom scream through the walls. After about two minutes, she went into her parents' bedroom to see what was going on. She found a silent room, and was only able to see her father's head and shoulders crouched behind the bed. She did not see her mom in the room. Her father told her, go to your room, just go to your room. Yasmin obeyed and went back to bed. As she was falling asleep, she heard a banging noise coming from her walk-in closet, which shared a wall with her parents' room. She described it as a noise that sounded like something hitting the floor. Yasmin went back to the room to see what all the noise was. Her father once again told her to go to her room and told her that mom is out for a walk. Yasmin once again obeyed and went back to bed. On December 1st, 2016, the police were called about a suitcase observed in the Humber River lying in shallow water in a location that is about 35 kilometers from the Shamji's home. Inside the suitcase, they found the body of Ilana Frick Shamji. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death was blunt or compressive neck injury with significant bruising to the face and neck, fractures of the larynx, and various other injuries on her body consistent with blunt force trauma. In addition, various other evidence such as blood and hair samples were obtained from the Shamji bedroom. On December 2nd, 2016, Toronto police arrested Mohamed Shamji on the charge of first-degree murder of Ilana Frick Shamji. He was meeting with his lawyer at the time of his arrest. 
In 2017, Mohammed Shamji applied for bail with strict conditions, but was denied by the court. Ultimately, in 2019, he pled guilty to the charge of first-degree murder, which carried an automatic life imprisonment sentence. He is eligible for parole after 14 years of imprisonment. Do you think that Mohammed Shamji got a light parole sentence? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to our channel for additional content and hit the notification button to be alerted about new episodes. Thank you for watching.